Okay, with all those preliminary ideas out of the way, now we're ready to actually do a hypothesis test and make sure we understand what it is that we're doing. So, how do we do a hypothesis test? Again, re remember, what we're trying to do is assume the theory is right and then calculate the probability that our estimate is uh, could be generated if that theory is true. What, how likely is it that we would see this data, this evidence, this estimate, given that the theory is correct? So we answer this in two different ways. First, you can think about calculating how far is the estimate away from some assumed value some theory would predict. And we can also calculate the probability. How likely is it that our estimate could randomly be this far away from the theoretical value, again, given, assuming that the theory is true. Or you can think about it a different way, the flip side, how unlikely is it that your data could come from a world where the null hypothesis is actually true? So let's, let's look at a concrete example here. Suppose our theory is that the, uh, for a certain population, now, now we know that in general, the average IQ is 100. It's just by definition 100. Uh, for a population in general, say adult people in the United States. Now the standard deviation is equal to 15. They just designed the, designed the tests this way. Now there are a couple of different tests, but let's assume we're using one where the average is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. What we want to do is go down to some place like North Carolina, and even though we know that the average IQ for people in the whole United States is 100, we want to test the hypothesis that the average IQ of people in North Carolina is also equal to 100. And so the way you're taught in a standard statistics class is to set up something called an H0, a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis would be that the population mean is equal to 100. So mu equals 100. So this is for North Carolina. This is what we're assuming to be true that we're actually testing. And then you set up an alternate hypothesis, an HA. And HA would say something like the uh, average IQ of people in North Carolina is not equal to 100. So not equal to 100, which means it could either be greater than 100 or less than 100. So we're going to start by assuming that the average IQ of people in North Carolina is equal to 100. And we're going to see, does our data provide evidence that the average IQ is not equal to 100? So let's look on a graph at what will happen. Now this is a graph of individual people and their IQ. The average IQ is, is 100, and the common distance that individual people are, individual observations of IQ are from 100, is 15. That's standard deviation. And so that means that 68% of people have an IQ within a hun uh, 15 IQ points of 100. In other words, between 85 and 115, 68% of people should have an IQ there. Uh, if we go out two of these standard deviations, down to 15, which is 30, two standard deviations, or down or up to 130, should have 95% of people in that range. So I've marked these off here. Let me just type 68% uh, is between the purple lines, 68.26 if you want to get really uh, exact, and 95%, uh, 95.44% 95 if you want to get really exact. Well, heck, we're in an econometrics uh, environment here. Let's be really exact. So 95.44% between the two green lines here and if we were to go out three standard deviations to the red poles here that would be up to 145 and down to 55 then you should have 97 sorry 99.72 percent of all the data between the two red lines but 
this tells us about where individual people's IQs would be. It doesn't tell us about where an average of people's IQs would be. The standard deviation of 15, once again, describes how the individual observations vary above and below the average of 100. But suppose we wanted to take a uh, sample of 100 individuals from North Carolina and calculate the average IQ of those individuals. What would we do then? Well, instead of using the standard deviation equals 15, we would have to adjust the standard deviation and call it a standard error, adjust it for the sample size. So in a previous lecture, we were talking about standard errors. This is a standard error for a proportion. But here, if we wanted to calculate, uh, sorry, go give an IQ test to 100 North Carolinians, and I'm a North Carolinian, so I can talk about us. The, uh, we'd have to take that standard deviation of 15 that describes individuals and divide it by the square root of n, 100, in order to give us the standard error. And so that standard error is going to be 15 divided by the square root of 100. And of course, you can do that in your head. The square root of 100 is 10. So the standard error is going to be a common distance that our sample estimates will be away from the true average IQ of people in North Carolina. 15 divided by 10 will give us a standard error of 1.5. So this normal distribution does not describe what is going to happen when we take samples and average people. This is a distribution of IQs, but not a sampling distribution. It becomes a sampling distribution when instead of using a standard deviation of 15, we divide it by a sample size and we get a standard error. Now, if we took a sample of one person, let's just address this, what if we just randomly bumped into me and I was a sample size of 1, then 15, the standard deviation, divided by the square root of 1, the sample size, would still be 15. And so this would be a, a distribution of how individual, uh, sorry, a, a sample of individuals, but that's just saying it's a distribu distribution of individuals. But it works for a sample size of 1. So if you were to walk up to me and my IQ was 150, way over here, then you would say, wow, that one person's IQ that I just met was so smart, it's impossible that that person, that one person, it'd be very unlikely, not impossible, but very unlikely that to meet a person with an IQ of 150 if it was true that the average IQ of people was 100. And so, yeah, you could reject the null hypothesis based on that one extreme observation. In my classes, sometimes I'll talk about, what if you your null hypothesis was that people from Mars had the same average height as people from Earth? But the first Martian you ran into was 12 feet tall. Well, you would reject that null hypothesis that people on Mars had the same average height as people from Earth. And the same if you met, the first person you met from a country was so brilliant, you would say, wow, they're not like us, right? And, and you would be justified, perhaps, in doing that, even with a small sample. But let's look at the distribution when we change the standard deviation to a standard error of 1.5. Now, you'll notice this normal distribution looks the same, but what has changed is the x-axis here. Instead of going from 100 to 150, it goes from 100 to 108. That's because now the mean is still 100, but um, the standard deviation, now we call it a standard error, is 1.5. Because the, this tells us that if the real IQ of people in North Carolina is 100, if the real average IQ of people in North Carolina is 100, and I take a sample size of 100 people and I calculate an X bar, a sample mean, then it will be very likely that that uh, sample average is somewhere in between 101.5 and 
98.5 within plus or minus one standard deviation. How likely will it be that your sample mean from 100 people is within one standard deviation? Well, it should happen 68% of the time if this is a normal distribution, right? And 95% of the time, your sample mean should be within plus or minus three, two of the standard errors. And almost all of the time, when you take a sample of 100 people, your sample mean should be between 104.5 and 97, that can't be right, within four, four, four and a half less, four and a half more. So 105.5 or 104.5. But that's all assuming that this average IQ for people in North Carolina is the same as the average IQ for other people. And so we'll pick this up in a second lecture.